Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me in the locker room today. I'm Alan Locker. Ryan's Hope made its television debut on ABC on July 7th, 1975, and the daytime drama ran for 13 years and 3,515 episodes until it went off the air on January 13th, 1989. The show was created by Claire Levine and Paul Avila Meyer and revolved around the trials and tribulations within a large Irish American family in the Washington Heights neighborhood of New York City. Levine and Mayer also served as the executive producers. The original cast included Nancy Addison Altman, Bernard Barrow, Justin Dees, John Gabriel, Helen Gallagher, Malcolm Groom, Ron Hale, Eileen Kristen, and Kate Mulgrew to name just a few. I have to thank Eileen and Stephen Bergman for getting this crew together today. Please welcome to the locker room, Ash Adams, who played John Reed Ryan, Malcolm Groom, who played Pat Ryan, Eileen Kristen, Delia Ryan, Jeff Pearson, Frank Ryan, James Wilczek, Ben Shelby. Jeff, Eileen, Hi, Ash, Jimmy, and Malcolm. Hey, everybody. Hey. 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 How's everybody doing? Good, Very good. well, thank you. Great, great to so be here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna st thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna start with Malcolm and Eileen since you were with the show from day one. Mm -hmm. um, I know fa fans were asking me online, what, what was your initial thought? Did you think it would uh, last as long as it did on ABC? Wow. I didn't know what to think. You know, Malcolm and I had both done Greece on Broadway. Yeah. And that was where my orientation was. In fact, when I said to my agent, uh, I don't know if I wanted to do a soap because I thought the trajectory of my life was going somewhere else. He goes, eh, it'll only run about six months. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, I no, thought my you, you were willing for a six month commitment. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the amazing thing was when Malcolm walked in, I didn't know who was in the cast. Malcolm walked in and we were, you know, great buddies from Greece. And then Nancy Addison came in and I knew Nancy ever since I was 16 years old. Then Justin Dees came in, who I knew from Greece, although we had not done the show together, but I certainly knew him. And then Bernie Barrow came in and I was a huge fan of Bernie's. He was like one of the only people that I used to watch on the soap. So I was just like, I couldn't, and then Helen you, Gallagher. You were in heaven. I was, I was. Yeah. And Malcolm, what uh, were you gonna say? Um, I thought my trajectory was going something different too, because I had been uh, involved in auditioning for a few other things. And actually so shortly after I got the show, uh, all those things came through, but I couldn't do them. <laughs> so that's the way it goes, right? But it was karmically the choice to work with Eileen and all of you guys, and uh, yeah, it's too bad it only ran for six months in your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> too bad, too bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Jeff, Jimmy, Ash, what do you remember about auditioning? Now, Jeff, you were the third actor, I believe, third or fourth to play that role. Do you? I think I was the fourth, wasn't I, Mel? Fourth. No, yeah. I, let me figure this out. Michael Hawkins. <laughs> Right, so Michael, Michael, Hawkins, um, uh, Michael Hawkins, Andy Robinson, Andy Robinson, Robinson Danny Kelly, Danny like Kelly, Kelly, but didn't also Don Scardino play it for a little? No, while? no. I, well, he might have come in as a substitute. Um, I, mean, I knew he Dan. Came as a substitute. He, uh, yeah, he was, it, it, and I wasn't even there if that yeah. happened. And then I there know was Johnny yeah. from you know the old days. <laughs> then there was a fifth, John Sanderford. So there were yes. that was after oh, me. God. After yeah, you, yeah, after yeah, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jeff, what do you remember, you know, of your agent, you know, giving you this, you know, thing to audition for? You know, it was a funny thing because um, I remember, I think Danny Kelly had, had left the show and he'd been gone for quite a while and they were looking to um, replace that character. And uh, I, I seem to recollect going in for an audition with... Um, and I'm blanking on the name of the casting director, and nothing happened. And so then about three months know. went by, and they hired uh, Shirley Rich to find that role. She had cast the original cast. Right. And I went and met Shirley, and I read in her office and completely blank, didn't make any reaction whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but, like me. Uh, then one thing led to the next, and then that, then they, 
you know, they offered me the role. And it was funny. I remember, I do remember it was late 82. And um, I had just accepted a, a play. I was going to do Streetcar Named Desire in uh, Stage West in Massachusetts. And my agent called me and says, uh, they're off, you know, they offered you this part of Frank Ryan and Ryan's Hope. And I guess it was for two year, two year contract. And I said, great, tell them I'll be back. <laughs> so I'll be back in eight weeks and we can start then. And they said, oh no. Tomorrow. <laughs> this is next week. And I had to call up the theater and they were very gracious. They let me out of the contract. So, Well, I think um, it, for, for you especially, it was meant to, for you to be there. Yeah. For you, you know, met your yeah. wife there, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Oh, I mean, right. Yeah. Yeah. Years later, and then we got married many, many years later after that. But uh, well, it was it was kind of a natural for me the whole thing. I mean, meeting Claire and um, Paul because I was raised in a large Irish Catholic family, so it was I, there was a lot of similarity. Malcolm and I used to talk about that a lot in those days. But uh, it was a very sort of comfortable fit for me that part. You were great. You were a great Frank as well. You were great too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and for you, Jimmy, what do you remember about auditioning? Well, I had a, I took a different route because I screen tested for all my children, and um, which is ultimately how I ended up on Ryan's Hope. But uh, what happened was um, everybody said I nailed it. Uh, um, they were all excited about my my screen test, and I didn't get it. And uh, I found out I didn't get it because I didn't look old enough for the part. And I was devastated. I never, ever thought I would ever, ever get that close again to getting a, a role. I remember I went down to Texas to visit my mom and stepdad just to, you know, because I was pretty bummed out. And uh, I worked at Keebler Cookies at the time as a, as a, uh, uh, as an elf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. A little cold than most of the other ones. In New York City? I worked on the graveyard shift loading trucks, uh, setting the trucks up for the drivers the next day. Um, so I thought that, you know, and I was a teamster. I mean, it was a good paying job even for back then. Um, and I thought, okay, that's, it's never going to get that, that, uh, close again. And then what I didn't know at the time was that when somebody does well on one soap, um, in the network, they'll pass your screen test to another network. And, uh, it just so happened that they had been, uh, diligently looking for Ben, uh, for Ben for a long time. They went through many actors. And when Joe Hardy got the tape, he said, that's my Ben. So I got a call from my agent saying, can you uh, come in um, uh, to meet with the producer? And I had no idea. She didn't give me any clue as to, I thought it was just, a. Um, you guys remember when you, before you audition, sometimes you would have to go in just for uh, a general meeting. And then they decide if he, if you're worthy of uh, an audition. So I thought that's all it was going to be. I, I had, um, actually, I had auditioned for a small part for Suzanne Ringrose, the casting director at Ryan's Hope at the time, six months prior, I think. And here's a funny story that I, I remember very well. And um, I often think of her when people ask me when I'm at the gym, uh, how come you don't lift heavy weights? And it's because of Suzanne. She <laughs> said, your face, she, she gave me this note and I could have took it really hard and but I took it, I knew exactly what she meant when she said it. She said, your your face doesn't match your body. And um, I, had this howdy, I had this howdy duty face and this, you know, Rocky II kind of body at the time or whatever. And I knew exactly what she meant. And from that moment on, I never touched a heavy weight since. So uh, um, when I came back to audition or not audition to me, uh, she was in the room and she said, hey, I'm glad you took my advice. Uh, and she remembered giving me that advice because um, I definitely cut down in, within that six months. Um, and Joe, Joe Hardy, uh, the executive producer, uh, super, super sweet guy. Um, I love that guy. Uh, have a, I owe him a lot because he could have given up on me uh, when I was horrible and Ryan Pope in the beginning. But he had me read some of the lines or whatever. And because I, I didn't go in there, I wasn't nervous because... Uh, I didn't go in there thinking I was going to audition. I thought I was just going there to talk. So I didn't have that pressure of, you know, I, I, I was just being natural. And uh, he said, yeah, you're, you're our guy. And uh, by the time I got home, my agent said, you got the part. And I had no, it was, it was 
it, it threw me for a loop and I, I went from being so down to so up within a matter of a week. <laughs> That's awesome. And Ash, what about you? Well, it's funny because listening to Jimmy, you know, I, I, there's a lot of similarities in my experience on how, how Ryan's hope came to be for me because I had I'd been working at the time with Bobby Hoffman, who was the head of West Coast Casting for ABC, and I was in his class. And oh, what wow. he was doing at the time, this was in, in 85 and 86, he was putting me in uh, to read with people that were screen testing for the network for other soaps. So I would be the guy if they were testing a woman or I would be the guy if they were testing another guy, you know, whatever. But I was reading within the scene and uh, he told me, he said, look, eventually they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're going to see you. They're going to, they're going to notice you and, you know, this will be good for you and blah, blah, blah. And then all my children called and wanted me to come to New York to uh, screen test. So I flew to New York for all my children to screen test. And I came back and, you know, I, I, you know, I, I thought, you know, nah, there's no, I, I, you know, I thought, I, I thought I nailed it. Um, Do you remember what character I, that was for, for all my children? You know, I don't. Um, yeah, it was, okay. only, it was only 64 years ago. Um, <laughs> I, 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 just I a little while ago. That right off the top it only of feels head. like that. I don't know why I don't know that, Alan. Um, but, uh, Sorry. So I, so I, so I, so my agent calls and says, you know, you didn't, you didn't get it. And I go back in with Bobby Hoffman and I'm in his class and he's like, don't worry about it. You'll get another shot. And like Ben, I mean, like James, sorry. I called James Ben all the fucking time. Sorry about that. Oh, um, but, but I, I, you know, I thought, oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm never going to get another screen. Just, you know, I'm never going to get another screen test. That's it. I blew it. You know, blah blah blah. And then I got another call several months later, saying that. And I think mm -hmm. Eileen, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was Felicia who used to be a producer at All My Children. Felicia Lane Bear. Yeah. Yes, and she had passed on my All My Children tape, screen test to Ryan's Hope, and as James just said. Joe Hardy. Wow. So yeah. these guys called my agent and flew me to New York again to screen test for John Ryan. Um, so on the plane, they very cruelly put the other two guys that were coming from oh. L.A. Ah. In, ah. Not, not only on the same flight, but in the same row. And, and, you know, and it was first class. It was the first time I'd ever flown first class. And I was like pretty excited. This was great. And they put us up at the plaza. I mean, it was, it was awesome. I mean, it was awesome. I was 22 years old, man. It was just, it was such a great, such a great experience. So anyway, about halfway through the flight, one of these other guys is testing for the role, um, comes sauntering up the, up the, the aisle. He had been in the back talking with somebody and he had two gin and tonics in his hand and he was just lit up. He was just wasted. And he goes, here, bro, uh, I got you GT. You know? And I go, no, no, thanks, man. And he goes, and he just, he exploded. He said, what? You think because you don't drink, you're going to get the job? <laughs> oh, wow. And he, and he, yeah. And he walked away, and I thought to myself, I can't say anything or I'll jinx it. You know, I can't, I can't say anything, I'll jinx it. But anyway, so I so I showed up at the at the studio at 66th Street um, and went in there. And th did we test together, Eileen? No. No, we did not. I was testing with John, with Sanford who took over for Jeff uh, when Jeff when yeah, when Jeff left, John Sanford came in. So I think yeah, I tested with him and I think with Nancy too, maybe if I remember she was around too, at least I met her that day. Um, and I, and I had this terrible screen test. I mean, I just sucked. Um, I, I was, I, I felt so bad and I begged to do it again. And I did it several times, I think. And I just, I tanked, man. I just, I didn't feel good about it. And um, I kept flashing on that idiot with the two gin and tonics thinking maybe he was right, <laughs> you know, and I just, I, I just blew it, you know, and I go home and I was living at the time, I was living in Venice, Venice Beach, and I was over the health food store on Main Street when this was still like a demilitarized zone down there. This was 1986. It was not a safe area. I was oh, living yeah, in, not at all. No, and I was living. I was living in a studio apartment above One Life uh, uh, health food store, 
uh, on Main Street in this $295 a month apartment. And I was digging ditches for a friend of mine who had a construction company. And I walked up the street this, this one morning I, and I decided not to go into work, which I did a lot. And I said, I got to go up to the omelet parlor and I'm going to get a newspaper and I'm just going to hang out today. So I go to the omelet parlor and there's no Los Angeles Times left. They're all gone. The only paper that's there is the New York Times. I've never read the New York Times in my life at this point. And I pick up the New York Times and I go back to my little apartment and I'm sitting there drinking coffee and I'm reading the New York Times and the phone rings. I'll never forget it, man. Phone rings and my agent says, well, they want you to do it. And I said, do what? <laughs> and they, and they said, you know, I, I was convinced there was no way I was going to get it. And she said, um, they, they want you to go and you got to leave in two weeks. And wow. so I hung up the phone and I called my dad. <sighs> Sorry. Don't be. And, and I, I called my father and I said, uh, I said, they, I, I said, they want, they want me to do it. And he said, do what? And I said, they want me to go to New York and play John Ryan. And he said, that a boy. Yeah. I, I don't think, I, I don't think it ever got any better than that for me, you know, audition wise. Um, wow. Cause I was 22. I had never done shit. I'd never done anything. You know, I'd done a few plays. And like Jeff said, you know, I was in, I was six, four weeks into rehearsal for a play. I had to go tell them that, you know, I had to drop out and they were furious at me. They were not gracious. Like Jeff just <laughs> said, they were not gracious at all. They were furious at me. And they said, ah, oh, you're a traitor. You're going to sell out. And then I said, yeah, you bet your ass I am. I'm selling out. I am out of here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it was it was a great experience, man. That that, that audition well, that was terrible turned out to be. Uh, it you know, it turned out to be a great, th yeah. It turned out to be a great thing and and made your dad proud. Yeah, I, thank I, God. Eileen and Malcolm, you know, I know the the question I'll ask next is going to be different for Jeff, Jimmy, and Ash because you guys, what what was your first day like? Because you were there for the first day of a break. I, I I can't even imagine what that experience is like for the. First no, you can't. Of a brand new show. No, you know, especially new for me, because I threw Frank down. I, uh, you know, the, the story was that I, uh, that Frank had fallen down a flight of steps, but nobody, of course, is supposed to know that Delia did it. Uh, I, they weren't sure really where they were going, but I had so much backstory to come in with. And, um, and, and it was, very difficult because I wanted to play it a certain way for camera, but Malcolm, as you well know, with Leela Swift, subtlety <laughs> was not her thing, no, not her thing. So I had to come in with like five different things going on in my head, and and because God forbid all those five things weren't there, and I could hear Leela over the headphones with the camera and going, closer, closer, <laughs> get closer, closer. And, and you could hear it bleed through the phone and you could see the cameraman going like, you know, and, and so it was, it was really, it, it was very scary. And because I was a stage actress, I could do things big, but I had really not wanted to, to go so full, you know, Norma Desmond on the first day, you know. <laughs> that that um, must have been, been like a big class for you, really. Like, I mean, the first day, if you oh, know, if, if everything you knew was theater, it must have been like a whole. I new... had done. I had done a little bit of TV. I had done. Um, I had actually worked with Lee Richardson and some really wonderful actors. In fact, an actor, Roy Poole, that I was sure was going to be playing. Um, uh, you know, da, uh, that he was going to be playing Bernie uh, Barrow's part, this this Irish actor who, uh, Amer American Irish, but, um, so I had worked with some extraordinary actors right before that, and uh, doing a TV thing, um, where I played a bad girl, 
who had never been like baptized or something. I played a couple of those. They definitely definitely have your number, (laughs) Eileen. Yeah. And especially, you know, for a Jewish girl, you know, that's quite something. (laughs) But Malcolm, what was it? Malcolm, what was your first day like? Um, well, actually, none of us knew that you had pushed him down the stairs. That was kept a secret for a while. And I knew it. Yeah, you knew it, but we didn't know what was going on with you. And then Michael Hawkins, actually, Frank was supposed to die. Yes. And, and then they ended up keeping him on. So good for you, Jeffrey. They, <laughs> he, he survived. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been there five years later. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but but the first day was difficult with me because they gave me this long speech of an Irish uh, folk tale. Oh, and, do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so it was just you know to go in the first day, but then have like a monologue that was maybe five minutes long. Uh, it was pretty challenging. But uh, oh, we only did back then were really lo- much longer than they are today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the scenes were twelve pages. 11 pages. I had a scene once um, in a confessional that was 11 pages. Most of it was God. me speaking with, with um, Father uh, Father John, I think that was his name. Yeah, um, yeah. Yes, my dear. Go on, my dear. Yes, my dear. Go on, go on, dear. Wow. You go on. I got to memorize the 11 pages. Oh, Scary. Yeah, I think we only did half the show the first day, and then the other did half. We? I think it seems like they drew out the the opening episode into two days because, you know, we were all figuring it out and figuring out each other and the director and you know how everybody wanted it to work. So, yeah, that's my recollection. It took us two days. It could be. I know that they pre-taped scenes with Michael Hawkins, and they took a lot of time with those scenes. The, all those pre-tapes, those flashback or, yeah, pre-tape scenes, they they were intricate and they gave a lot of time. And then they get to us and it was like, go. But, you know, it was so different then because we had blocking in the morning, which was long, a long morning of blocking. And then we had a rehearsal. We had a um, a rehearsal in front of the camera, not in costume. And then we had a dress rehearsal, and then we had tape. It was a long day, even though our day ended at like four o'clock, because Ryan's Hope is only half an hour. It was long, and the note session, remember those note sessions, Malcolm? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had two. Yeah. You know, I think I think you all got those note sessions also, because, you know, pretty much we, you know, Leela had to get like a lot of notes. That's so funny. Was it Father McShane? I think one of the fans. Father McShane. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Right. John Perkins. Good, Alan. <laughs> no, thank one you. Of our, uh, Lolo Luther or something like that. One of our fans just gave me the answer. Oh, oh thank you, fans. Thank you. <laughs> Jeff, what do you remember about your first day? Well, you know, I remember it very well because, um, there's a Leela Swift story here, too. Um, <laughs> oh, is she going to be the running theme? Yeah, uh, well, Leela, Leela was directing that episode, but I remember I was standing on the set. This was at the old studio on 54th Street, of course, mm. which was a whole story unto itself. Where's that? Yeah. Yeah. Tiny. Yeah. It was on 53rd. Anthony. Dark Shadows. Third and between 9th and 10th. Or 10th Dark, Dark Shadows Dark. had been shot there. Dark oh, Shadows was... was that's right. Uh, it was it still in the head. still in the walls. But it was she right. Was. There. <laughs> hey, Lisa, and Leela Remember Swift that? was the director. Yes. Right. The director at Dark Shadows. Yeah. Oh, wow. But yeah. Um, I was standing down for the first scene um, on the floor in full full uh, wardrobe. Uh, before the cameras rolled. And I remember I was standing there and John Gabriel came up to me and he says, welcome to the show. You're here to save the ratings. <laughs> no pressure. Not too much pressure, yeah. <laughs> but I remember, so the first scene we shot, I don't know if it was the first scene, but the first day, there was a scene where Nancy's in a scene. She's my long lost love. I'd been gone for two years or whatever. And... <laughs> Nancy's in a scene, and at the end of the scene, she turns, and I'm in the entrance to the room, and they do a shot of me. So we shoot it, and then Leela comes up to me, and she was the director, and she said, so now this is, you haven't seen her in two years. This is your love of your life. So when you, when we, 
turn to you when the camera comes to you. So what are you going to do? And I said, did you see what I just did? She said, yeah. I said, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> she said, no, no, let me explain to you. You haven't seen her in two years. <laughs> well, that's how it started. Oh, God, oh, well, subtlety right. was out the window for sure. That's right. <laughs> yeah, seriously. How about you, Jimmy? My first day? Yeah, I remember? Um, I actually remember the lines from my first day. Uh, oh, my God. It was with Kathy Larson, and it was uh, the lines where uh, I come in, I, um, I'm looking for her, and I say, you, Elizabeth? And she says, yes. And I said, I'm Ben Shelley. Uh, you, Elizabeth? Yes. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, is that, I'm, a, yeah. is that, is that how yeah. you did it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was that Friday, uh, Friday Cut. and it was just you, Elizabeth? I'm Ben Shelley. And that was it. And uh, thank God that's all I had on my first day because I was a nervous wreck. Um, <laughs> the reason why I remember it so well, too, is because uh, I had this uh, acting coach who would um, tell me that I wasn't, um, like I would say the word fur instead of four. So she, she had me overdo it. And I remember I said, you Elizabeth, I'm <laughs> I, you, you know, for you. And, and I, I overdid everything, and and I did that for a little while until I realized, you know, um, just be myself and just talk how I I, I speak. And um, but uh, I was just I remember being a nervous wreck, and I just remember thinking, thank God I only have you know the two lines that I had. And uh, um, but I but here's the funny thing is that Ryan's Hope um, was Ryan. I used to watch Ryan's Hope and and Loving. Um, those were the only two soaps I watched and I was a fan of Ryan's Hope. Um, and I remember um, being attracted to Maggie. Uh, I had a little, <laughs> little touch on Maggie. And I believe it was my, um, the first time I got to work with her was around episode 11 or episode 13. And I couldn't remember a line. And Henry Kaplan, do you guys remember? <laughs> I was yeah. and I was scared of Henry Kaplan. Um, yeah, well, he ended up being he ended up being you know uh, a guy that I truly admired and and respected and and I got a, along with very well. But he had a certain way about him that when you're new, you could think that you know he's he's going to be a, a, a son of a gun. Yeah, when he hits you he with was. the wand, and he, he could, hits you with his magic wand. Yeah, that's yes, a little bit of wand. <laughs> so anyway, I, I felt so bad. I I remember I, somehow I got through the scene. I don't, I don't even know how. Um, and poor, poor Callie had to put up with me. Um, but it was just so weird to be in front of her when I used to watch her on TV and I was attracted to her and I had a crush on her and now she's my sister. Um, and <laughs> kind of like Eileen said, you know, when, and especially when you're new, you have all this exposition every, so, so tell me more. And then you got to go on and on. Really? You don't say, Oh, I'm going to say it again now. And, and you just go on and on and on. And like back then, there was a lot of uh, dialogue, and uh, uh, particularly when you're new. So anyway, I go downstairs, and, and I'm practically in, in tears, and I'm thinking, I, I got to go back to Keebler. I'm not cut out for this. I got to go back to Keebler. That is the last line of the day. <laughs> it was such a pivotal point in me um, not quitting acting for the rest of my life. Henry Kaplan calls me. I'm in my locker room, and, and I, I think I probably was in tears. And and I get a call from uh, the security guard in the office to come inside, and he said, "Don't worry, you were brilliant." And just and I, and he and he was lying through his teeth. But what it did for me was it showed that he's he was being supportive, and and it just gave me uh, it, it 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 spoke volumes about who he was, and and it it just did. It's what I needed instead of him coming at me like you suck. You, you know, he came at me like, a, like I'm a hockey player, so he came at me like a coach who knew how and understood. Okay, this is what this kid needs. He needs a little pep talk. He needs a little encouragement. That you know, and it's and it's and ultimately, um, I got better about a year later. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Henry's bark was worse than his bite, but his bite could really screw somebody up on their first day. And I had to go over to him once and I said, you know, you're embarrassing yourself. First of all, why are you making this person's first day so difficult? You, you really shouldn't do that, Henry. It's embarrassing. Or if you're going to do it, don't do it around me. I, I, I was very offended by it. We became very, very good friends. 
Well, he would but, call you things like you're awful. Uh, he'd oh, call God. you things. He'd call you <laughs> things. Uh, no, dude. It, whatever. I, dude, he, dude. I, all right. I'm not even going to start with my Henry Kaplan stories. I have Henry Kaplan stories. <laughs> well, Ash, uh, share your first day. What was your first day like? You know, I mean, listen, I'm listening I'm listening to James, you know, and I and I keep, you know, I, I, you know, my first day was absolutely boring, actually. I came out of an elevator in the hospital because Frank was, my dad was in the hospital for some reason. Remember, Eileen? He yeah, was, but that first day, that was the day I was in that black suit with the white right. piping. That's right. And I had so much dialogue, so you might have gotten off easy. Oh, I, I had, did. I did not have a lot of dialogue. You let me just say, I had so much dialogue, and I had to audition for Saturday Night Live, my dream job, yeah. like at 6 o'clock that night. I can't even tell you how disastrously that went because I had so <laughs> much dialogue that day on your first day. Yeah. But well, it was a great sorry. It was a great day, though. Uh, well, I listen. I, I was, I was, I was horrified, as Jimmy was just saying. I was, I was horrified, and I had never done any television, and I was surrounded by people that that were really good actors, and I was just not, and I didn't know what I was doing, and I was horrified, and I remember walking in there and and seeing Sandiford in in bed, and and it was just surreal, man. I don't remember much about it. However, what I will speak about is. The first fight scene Jimmy and I had, which were one of many, and Jimmy just said he's a hockey player. He was a teamster. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, well, listen, listen. Let me just compare myself <laughs> to the teamster hockey player for a moment. I'm a skinny surfer kid from Malibu, coming to New York City for the first time and having to square up with this cat. Jimmy punched me in the mouth so hard because our Whoa. because. Because our, and, and, it, and by the way, it wasn't the first time Jimmy punched me in the mouth. I mean, he punched me in the mouth several times. And, and I remember looking at Henry Kaplan, who was directing this one episode, and Jimmy had gone back and we really got into it. I mean, Jimmy and I were both pretty physical cats and, and I was always, you know, over the top because Jimmy was just, he was a scarier dude than me. He was just a tougher dude. And so I would just overcompensate and try to go harder. And he punched me in the mouth. And I remember stopping tape and looking at, looking up at Kaplan in the booth and saying, why, why do I have to take a punch in the mouth? Why do I have to keep taking a punch in the mouth? And Henry came down and he goes, what's wrong with our, go, Danny Aiello Jr was our stunt coordinator, remember? Yes, of course. Sweet, sweetest guy in the world. Wonderful. What a sweetheart. And he comes over to me and he whispers in my ear, stop being such a pussy. And, <laughs> and that was, you know, we had to go and do it again, you know, and that was it. And you know what? I stopped being a sissy about it, you know? <laughs> and and it was, it was always dreaded when I had a fight scene with Jimmy because it's just, I always knew I was going to take a punch. But uh, we, had, we had a good time. We had a really to interject, uh, Ash, I, re I remember that well, and I remember how upset you were with me, and I remember how, <laughs> and I remember how apologetic I was. And, and oh, and no, absolutely, no, you were. Absolutely, no, you were. No amount of I'm sorry is, you know, I get the, the look in his eye. I mean, <laughs> he's going to punch me in the mouth. Put it that way. It might have been the first. It might have been the first hit I took since I was in fourth grade. You got to remember, you know. I mean, but I here's the thing, you know, as as you know, until you're trained, like when I got trained, you know, had a had a had a fake fight on Walker. Mm. When you're in your first fight scene, and of course the adrenaline's pumping, you're nervous and all that. It, it you have to learn to miss. You know, it, you're you know, yeah. I've had so many street fights that I. You don't well, you hadn't learned, you hadn't and, learned and yet. It's I a weird understand. thing until you're in it. And, and here's something you'll appreciate. Payback's a bitch. So when I'm on Walker and I'm working with all these these uh, new people that have to fight me that have never had a fight scene, they're punching me in the face. And, and, <laughs> you know, and, I'm, and I'm like, what the fuck? 35, <laughs> years, 35 years later, I feel much better about it. Yeah, 35 years later, he gets payback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> To hit somebody and to try, you know, and know that you got to miss by 12 inches. It's a, yeah, it's a weird it's, thing, but then it's a, weird you know, it's, a, it's an art in and of itself. No question. No oh, question. I, I bet. I apologize. I mean, I know, no, they, I'm always uh, amazed at stunt uh, choreography. Sure I deserved it. Stunt choreography on any show is always amazing to watch because it, it does look so real. Um, let's talk about some of the great co-stars. I know you've mentioned her name a number of times, Nancy Addison. Oh, um, I know fans want to hear want want to hear things about Nancy. You I know, had such a crush on Nancy, man. I had such a crush on. Oh, her. who didn't? Who yeah, didn't? I, yeah, she was, just, she was just lovely, man. She was lovely. 
Yeah, uh, Nancy and I had known each other for several years before Ryan's Hope started, like Eileen had known her, and I had known Eileen, so that when the three of us came on, it was, it's it was unbelievable. unbelievable, yeah, yeah, but she, she had a grace and a beauty that uh, was just untouchable. It was she and a wonderful person too. Yeah. yeah. Really, uh, we became so close. I mean, we were always close, but we became so close before she passed away. Yeah. The three years, and you know, Malcolm would would come and 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 see Nancy before she passed away. It was very very. It was very hard, very hard to deal with. But she was beautiful. Yeah, she was. was. A, she was an elegant person, and she kind of had like that mid Atlantic dialogue. Yeah, thing. she did. Yes, like really did. down, and she was from New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. It really was. Really good. That's good so Eileen. between her and Kate Mulgrew, you know, the Mid Atlantic was flying like yes, all over the yes. place. It was fantastic. <laughs> Fans were asking about Kate, and I know you tried to get Kate for today as well. She's a first-time grandmother, and she said, "I don't know. I'm just obsessed." <laughs> with being a grandmother, and oh. maybe we'll do it some other time. You know? Oh, wow. Well. So funny. But, but Katie, she had such incredible. Oh, yeah. Is that Kelly? Oh! Hey, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. And hearing all of you, Shoot. and I miss y'all. Oh, oh miss you too. So good to see you. You look great, Kelly. Oh, Thank Kelly. you. Ben was oh, just talking about you. Jim was just talking about you. Yeah, what a crush he had on you. What a crush you. he had on you. <laughs> Tell me that, brother. You should have <laughs> interesting. <laughs> now they have great memories working oh, with. Awesome. Callie, fans were all asking for you, so I know you're making them very happy right now. Oh, sure thank you. Thanks. And us happy. Yeah, thank you so happy. much. And, and your co-stars. And your co-stars, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember your first day, Callie? My first day? Yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember what I was wearing, which wasn't ah, much. Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Thanks, off and underwear. I do remember my first day. And um, it was it was great. I was really not as nervous as you think I would have been. Everybody was so supportive. Um, and uh, yeah, I just have, I have good memories of that day. And I think because I was kind of, inexperienced and naive slash ignorant, you know, I just, you know, if I didn't feel good about a scene, I'd, I'd run into the studio. Do you remember that? Into the, uh, what's it, it called? The, the, uh, the booth and ask them to do it again. And, you know, oh. um, they're like, well, it's fine. But I, I just <clears throat> wanted to get it down. I wanted to measure up to all these wonderful actors I, I had the privilege of working with. So, but and, yeah, you, and I was working with Gloria, which was great. Oh, that's awesome. Do you two remember meeting for the first time? You and Jeff? I remember it's meeting. I was spying. I think Maggie was spying <laughs> on him in the hospital. I think that's the point. So I was actually spying on, on him. I was behind a door and he was there with Nancy. Yeah, you remember you were ill? I think that's the first time our characters. Yeah, I was really coming from yeah. the or something. Yeah. And I remember meeting Jeff thinking, Wow, he, he's been here forever. He's so confident, you know, and everybody respects him. And, you know, he must have been on the show for years and years and years. And he'd just been there for four months or something. But he had that, you know, confidence. So for uh, sure. Yeah. But yeah, we worked a lot together, which was great, you know. But I leaned to everybody. I was, it was a great time. It really it was. Sure was. Yeah. Sure was. Sure yeah. Was. What do you, what do you think that experience? Uh, taught you that you took with you later, you know, through the rest of your careers. Wow, there's sure. great do, you, you got to do your homework. You know, you got to yeah. do your homework. Well, I and think I think people who are successful uh, on daytime television, uh, it's it's kind of a thing that um, a lot of really good actors find it very very difficult because, like Eileen was saying, the preparation. But it's almost like you have to have kind of a native knack for learning a lot of stuff on a constant basis. Now, when you're playing the same character over a period of years, um, it becomes easier because the stories are long and you're familiar with the story you're in. 
That's right. Uh, but some people it comes too easy. Other people study, study, study just to be able to you know do it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. so remember, I, I remember, remember Gloria. Anything you do after that? Remember Gloria De Haven? Of sure. Course. Gloria, yeah. Gloria De Haven. That was, was Callie's there. mom. Callie, right. yeah. And, I, and, and, I remember, and uh, Jim's too. And I remember yeah. she had such. She was a movie star, and she had so much trouble with the lines. Yeah, man. Yeah. She, she couldn't yeah. do it. You know, that just wasn't part of her training. You know, yeah. and it just blew her away. And I, yeah. and I, I had a huge crush on her too. By the way, <laughs> uh, huge crush on Gloria. Uh, Gloria was. I was working with her on my first day, and she was having. So we were both, you know, new to 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 the daytime Today, thing, oh, yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was having a hard time. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was so yeah. on and so great when she would could remember yeah. the lines, but yeah. she was sort of more nervous than I was. So that I think gave me more confidence in a way. You know, yeah, it's I would, like I would bet. I must have been. I never so. got to go mano a mano with Gloria. I never got to you know share the screen oh, with her. That would have that must have been great, man. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a hoot. I, it was, I bet. I bet. She was a character yeah. and she was wonderful. She and Kelly together were great. Oh, yes. that was, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. seeing that. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. good chemistry. Yeah. Callie, my, you're getting my, a, a you know, big my mother was so excited with that Gloria De Haven. You know, Gloria De Haven yeah. was one of my yeah. Mothers, my dad you know. too. My dad was the same way. My dad was like, "Oh, Gloria De Haven, love Gloria De Haven." He had a crush on her as well. <laughs> you, so you impressed him twice. <laughs> yeah, twice, twice, twice in my life. <laughs> uh, Callie, you're getting a big hello from Italy and another world fan who who Aww. loved you as Paulina. They said ciao from Italy. So. I didn't realize this was live. That's yeah, <laughs> they're staying. They're staying. Well, I, the learned, I learned from. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I think I just got such great training mm -hmm. on that show. But I also just had such an appreciation for soap opera actors. I mean, mm -hmm. later on, as I went on to to do other things, I realized that really these guys, what they did every day, was amazing. And yeah. and I also had more of an appreciation for just. That, that these guys were closer to theater. I mean, the, the people I work with all, you know, had done a lot of theater, but when I went on to do a prime, you know, nighttime and to do film, I, I had a hard time because it wasn't as natural. You're acting for a camera and sometimes the person isn't there and you have to be aware of the light and being, you know. So I just had uh, more of an appreciation for, for the acting that goes on and the challenge of it all and, yeah. you know, I don't know what it gave me as an actress, but I, I know I appreciate. It's much more like doing a play. And, and Jeff, you really have spent so much in primetime. It must, the primetime stuff must be a piece of cake compared to Ryan's Hope in a way. To, well, you know, like Eileen was saying earlier, you know, you had so many deeply, deep uh, involved dramatic scenes. I mean, so Eileen did a lot of comedy too. She was, there's not much comedy on daytime, obviously. I don't know if I ever did any comedy on daytime, but Eileen, just but Eileen, comedy, but Eileen, Eileen brought the comedy. You know, yeah. we needed it. But she sure, um, she sure the did. Scenes are so involved. You. you rarely see that in prime time. I mean, uh, you know what I mean? It's it's kind of a unique yeah. medium, really. Yeah. Which is pretty much gone for the most part, I guess. Yeah. 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 With only four left, and sadly none. In New York. <laughs> I think when we were doing them in the uh, '80s, uh, there were fourteen. Daytime show. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, there was. There was, uh, yeah, 13, yeah, 13 or 14, yeah. 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 That's I, incredible. Yeah. Um, can you share memories of Helen Gallagher as well? I know fans would love to hear. Me? Helen, uh, Helen was true north, you know? Helen was true north, which a lot of the, the characters that are the matriarch of a soap usually are. It's like um, the value system. Is yeah. with that with and um, working with her and I, you know, I Malcolm can second this was was quite extraordinary. Her discipline and her commitment and her it, it was so real. Yeah. It was really. Yeah, Helen. She, she, Helen scared the hell out of me. Yeah, I mean, me too. You know, she just scared the <laughs> hell out of me. I mean, she was you know she was kind of an icon. And you know when I when I came on in '86. 
I remember, you know, I, Eileen really took me under her wing. Eileen was the reason that I didn't, you know, didn't completely freak out and panic and, <laughs> and, 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 and end up down in the village, you know, you know, drinking Clorox or something. But I mean, she really not under my me, watch. Yeah, she really, she really took me under her wing. And and one of the reasons that that that, that what we we somehow had a had a great chemistry right away, me and Eileen, and and we we, we became great friends and are still to this day great friends. And she was my best friend in New York during that whole three years and she really took care of me so that when I had to face off with Helen I mean I remember Helen looked at me one time I hadn't been there longer than maybe three weeks and I was walking down the hall and coming out of the makeup room or something and, and she looked at me and she said get your shit together kid and I was like oh fuck wow. oh god what did I do you know and then Bernie took me into his dressing room and he taught me how to memorize lines because I really didn't have, I was flying by the seat of my pants. And Eileen worked with me a ton, but Bernie said, come in here. And he sat me down and he said, here's what I do. And he wrote out every line on, on a legal pad. And he said, you have to write out these lines, especially when you had six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pages of dialogue to do, which, yes. was, which was normal. Um, which was, you know, it, it was a, it was a muscle you had to, you know, you, you had to develop. And so he had me write out my lines and he said, now write out everyone else's in the scene. So I would write wow. out everyone else's. And he said, now, you know, not, not only do you know your lines, but you know, everyone else's so they can never blame you. <laughs> and, I thought, and I thought, wow, this is, nice. like the, this is like the greatest advice I, I, an actor has ever given a young actor was, you know, learn your lines and everyone else's so they can't point the finger at you. Uh, I, I just I, I love both of them, though. They were they were scary as hell uh, to me, but they were fantastic to work with and learn from because they were both such such studied professionals. You know, but I, I think sometimes it's good at you know a young age if, if there are people who sort of scare you because it, it makes you i think become more professional in in your environment whether it's acting or any job you're you know you're sort of looking up to those folks and don't want to disappoint whatever you know? work whatever work ethic i developed you know th after that was because of ryan's hope and the people that i got to work with on that show mm -hmm. with everybody i mean everybody that in our cast um for me i mean i could have ended up on you know what was it you know i could have ended up on what was that other one that that i don't want to say the name of but i mean i could have ended up anywhere and i ended up i ended up on ryan's hope with all these great actors and it was just it was such a it was such a a fortunate thing for me because i could have gotten all those bad habits that, that we mm -hmm. all see on other shows and it just didn't really exist on ryan's hope you know it just didn't exist yeah. The great thing about Ryan's Hope was it was not generic. Um, maybe, I don't know if I ex can explain this right, but because, um, like, I would learn my lines at home, but that wasn't satisfying to me. I had to, like, in the beginning, the first three years, you know, Malcolm and I, we had, you know, all that stuff when I was hysterically blind. Yeah, yeah. And, you know... <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy shit. Not and just blind, but hysterically blind. His, I was hysterically <laughs> blind. First, I think I was really blind. Then I became hysterically blind, and I don't know. And, and then, and then, because it got me so much attention, I faked my blindness. Mm. And we, Malcolm and I, had scenes that were really intricate. You know, Malcolm, everybody's one of their favorite scenes is the scene where you throw me the hairbrush. Yeah. And I catch it. You catch the blind Delia catches the uh, hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I of think course. one thing only I think, time. Yeah, I think what uh with, along the non-generic, it was the first uh soap opera that was set in a real city. It was set on the mm -hmm. a specific neighborhood on the upper west side mm -hmm. of New York. It was an Irish Catholic family yeah. uh, with all of the morality that went along with that. That's why Helen was so perfect mm -hmm. to, to play that with that hard exterior she had. And mm -hmm. the thing about Helen, though, underneath, she was soft and and loving. And when she had emotional scenes, it, you remember, Eileen, she would oh. just dissolve and it would like move you more than anything else because of the di dichotomy between that, that uh, hard shell and that soft, uh, beautiful emotional center. Mm -hmm. But so, so it, was a, it, it was a first in a lot of ways. It was, I think, uh, Shirley Rich cast all theater actors 
uh, yes. originally. Yeah, not she me. didn't use any. Well, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it just had a different, and the writing was elevated. The, the acting was top notch. So it was not generic in so many ways, mm. like you were saying, Eileen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think the neighborhood too, Malcolm. I mean, the uh, hospital was a stand in for Columbia Presbyterian. Right, right. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was mm -hmm. a, it wasn't the fashionable, what we think of as the Upper West Side. It was. Further oh, up, farther up, yeah. yeah Washington Heights area, yeah. Wasn't, yeah. wasn't the name? Wasn't the name Riverside? Riverside, right? Riverside. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was very far up. Yeah, like a hundred and tenth, hundred. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and everything yeah. felt real about it, except the elevator in the hospital would yeah. always be yeah. like. Mm. My, my, de <laughs> my debut came out of the. I, that was my first shot coming out of that elevator. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably, the, probably the reason the show got canceled. <laughs> Jeff and Callie, do you have a favorite storyline from your time on the show? I just want to say one thing about Helen. The only thing uh, I would say to echo what Eileen and, and Malcolm said is uh, our relationship was just like mother and son. Yeah, mine it too. It was really a beautiful yeah. thing, and I really enjoyed all the all the uh, scenes that we had, and we had yeah. quite a few over three years. Yeah, yeah. I have to, I really, I have to I, say that too because she was, you know, she played my grandmother, and right. she yeah. she certainly had that 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 quality with me, and that it was it was very authentic. Yeah, was, that, that was one of the things about Ryan's Hope is it it felt like a real family. It really it, did. It, it did. Felt like all those relationships, you know, carried over into an etheric realm, and you know, I would have dreams about my family, Ryan's Hope family, and mm -hmm. you know, it was like all yeah. connected. Yeah. I still I still do. I still do. I did I last still, night. <laughs> I, still I still do. And I was just with Eileen in New York in September, like we were talking about earlier. And I was wandering around New York and I hadn't been there in years. And it was just this flood of, 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 of nostalgia came over me when I was wandering around the city. And it was great because, you know, because of the pandemic, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't so crowded as it normally is. So it was a little bit more like the 80s New York that I remembered yeah, wandering right. around. Yeah. And it was really, you know, I got to tell you, I mean, if I don't get a chance to say it, I'll say it right now. It was the best three years of my life because it was my college. You know, I was 22 coming off the beach in, in L.A. and, you know, coming into this to this 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 mosaic of, of actors and 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 directors and writers and producers. And, and it was yeah. just, it was a, it was an absolute dream come true for me. And the great thing about it was, is that I realized that as it was happening, as it was happening, because people like Eileen and Malcolm and Jimmy and Callie, we all genuinely, I think, liked each other too. Absolutely. I mean, we hung out with each other and Eileen and I were inseparable, man. I mean, we went out together, we, we hung out together, we had the same friends and just this, this camaraderie that you hear people talk about all the time <laughs> and, you, and you can tell they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> or not. I mean, we, I love sure. these people. I love these people. And there wasn't an hour that went by in that in that three years where I didn't look up and say, thank you, man. This is so yeah. great. Yeah. This is so great. And I look back on it now, 30 something years later, as by far, you know, the best three years of my life. You know? Yeah, uh, Alan, I have to I have to share a dream bit of my dream last night about Helen, because I dreamed we were doing this. <laughs> but we were in a classroom and, and Helen was sitting in a chair in the back and you asked her what some of her favorite scenes were. So from the dream world, <laughs> wow, channeling <laughs> Helen, and say the, the Irish scenes in the bar on St. Patrick's mm. Day where yeah. she would, where they'd bring in uh, Irish singers and dancers, teach us how to jig. Mm. Uh, you probably all had to learn how to jig, right? And, yeah. um, and uh, then Helen would inevitably sing Danny Boy. That's right. And we'd have to learn, so, the, for the last show, we had to all learn the words for Danny Boy, which we only knew the first chorus. So <laughs> I don't know if you remember that last, uh, that I last remember, day was really. That, was, that yes. was my favorite memory of, um, of Helen, or my most vivid was her singing Danny Boy and talk about that softness, that vulnerability underneath her, you know, yeah. disciplined act. Yeah, she was just, I'm glad I never got to work with her because I wouldn't have been able to get you, know, <laughs> you, you, you just gave me chills because yeah. I, all, all the fans have been asking what did it feel like on set 
to to knowing the show was ending and having her sing it, that must have her been her singing that song and then she bro she couldn't get through it. Remember that? Yeah, I, she was yes. Lying. She broke yes. down. Did everybody sing along? I don't know if yes. that was standard or everybody not. Everybody sing along. We didn't know the words. And right. <laughs> so they're, they're panning. They're panning shown it to my children. <laughs> People are either too choked up themselves or they didn't know the words. <laughs> but uh, she carried us through. Yeah. She was amazing. And she just, you know, so yeah. I have to tell you about the last day. Yeah. I have yeah. to tell you a funny story about the last day. Jason had given a uh, Ash had given up his apartment, so he mm -hmm. was staying with me for the last couple of weeks of the show. Mm -hmm. yep. I have never overslept in my life. Jesus oh. Christ! Oh, I remember this. The last day oh. there was a snowstorm, <laughs> and we overslept, mm -hmm. and we couldn't get a cab. We're running down West End Avenue and running snow. in <laughs> sprinting. <laughs> oh, and, just, oh, and I had my hair in this crimp thing, which, and I had my makeup on from the night before. <laughs> I was, I, and I had never done anything unprofessional never. ever in my whole no, career. I can't imagine you ever being late. But oh, we were. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we were. were. We, were, we, were late. we were late. We were late. Oh, yeah, my it was God. It was awful. Yeah. Awful. In a snowstorm. That was a hard day. That was a hard day for all. January of 6, 1989. I remember that day well. Oh, yep. wow. Was it 89 or, or 90? It was 89. 89. It was 89. 89. 1989. That was the last air, air date, I believe, Jimmy. That's when it That's, that's when the it last aired. air date. Oh, yeah, no, January 13th, date. I thought it yeah. was. January 13th. No, was, I could be wrong. I thought it went in. I could swear it that... We finished up 89, but the last air dates was in 90. And I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. I'm pretty sure you're wrong about that. Uh -uh, I think I'm really right. <laughs> pretty, 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 pretty sure you're wrong the about The last that. air shows were in 90. I'm, you're out I'm, of your mind, Mom. I'm not. <laughs> Sober as a judge. No, Wait, okay, so that's fine. Callie, you mentioned your kids. And Jimmy, you have kids. Any of the kids uh, showing interest in following in your footsteps? Uh Mine, not at all. <laughs> and um, I don't, you know, my older one, definitely not. My little one has, has uh, definitely more, he's more right brain than my left brain son, my older one. Um, and he has potential, but he has no desire, none. Mm -hmm. My so, daughter did a lot of acting um, in, in uh -huh. high school. She's an artist. Um, so she, oh, nice. she could. Um, she's very, very good. Um, and my son did um, from earlier on, but yeah, my no, daughter was I, more interested, and was she was wonderful. Player. But uh, she's a she's a painter, and um, oh, awesome. she's in, she's actually in university right now, nice. and uh, so she's studying oh. that. And uh, but she was she was really interesting. To answer your question, uh, no, I don't think any but, of my children. Are. No, we didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just no. <laughs> what? This is the script. What is that? An air date? That up, Jimmy. Does it have an air date on it, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. January thirteenth, eighty nine. It says, yeah. I really? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, and and the fan, the fans are saying so too. Yeah. Um, oh. Wow. Jimmy, I, Jimmy, I've I lost it. Ask because I know <laughs> for the last nine years, you you've given up acting and you've been a deputy sheriff with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Yeah. What? Oh wow. Wow. wow! wow! Thank, thank you for doing that. But what led you down that road? Well, it, it's actually what I thought I was going to be before I um, uh, fell into acting. I went to college for police science. Um, in 1982, oh, wow. I was with the Paramus, New Jersey Police Reserves. Um, and I did I, that to get a, a foot in the door. Um, I mean, I even trained. This is when the PR24 um, replaced the Billy Club and. Uh, I got certified on that and I was just like doing security for some uh, local high schools, especially like on cabbage night, you know, things like that. Um, nothing major, but I was just trying to get a foot in the door. I still planned on going to a four year um, college. I only did one year of college, but I studied police science, but I also, you know, did acting and my high school Shakespeare teacher 
um, I kept in touch with him after and he said, you know, you can't do both acting. You got to go full force or, or don't go at all. And I never wanted to say shoulda, woulda, coulda. Um, and I never thought I'd make a single dollar as an actor, but you know, I'm a risk taker. And I, I said, I got to at least try and fail then, you know, always wonder what if, um, so I did it. And after 300 auditions, you know, <laughs> I got to meet oh, yeah. um, a, lot of, a lot of rejection and thank God I can take rejection and criticism. Well, um, but being a cop or being an actor were the only two things I ever wanted to do. And I'm grateful um, that I got to do both in my lifetime. Um, yeah, that's great, man. So um, it just came full circle. And I was just so happy that my department didn't uh, discriminate against my age at the time because uh, I was 48 when they um, accepted me into the academy. Wow. Um, and uh, hopefully they'll they'll continue to uh, accept me because I continue to uh, I plan on staying on the department until I'm 68. So hopefully my mind and my uh, my uh, body will let, allow me that. Well, you look great, Jimmy. I'm sure yeah. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm sure it'll be fun. Um, thanks, thanks, thanks for being out there, man. Yeah, right. stay, stay safe. Being out I still get tagged because I have to act like a tough guy when I go to work. So. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I hope you don't punch anybody and, in the and, mouth. And Ash, now I'm missing the punches that I'm throwing. Yeah, I'm, well, <laughs> I'm not missing them. Now, now you better land them all. <laughs> in fact, now, Jimmy, you know, I box a lot and I have the last 20 years. You and I have to have a rematch. Oh, <laughs> Uh, I don't doubt you'd kick my ass. I'm coming over the I'm coming over the hill today. Let's uh let's do that. <laughs> and Ash, you're, you're not acting as much. You're doing much more writing and directing. Is that yeah, true? I, I, I am for some reason. And it's uh, very <laughs> odd considering that I didn't graduate high school, that I'm you know making my living as a writer and um most of the time, you know, I did a movie with Gabriel Byrne back in 2018 um, that, that was, you know, as an actor, that was great. And I still I still get to act, uh, you know, but, you know, I have not been, uh, you know, out there as an actor. I've been putting my own projects together for, you know, for the last 15, 20 years. And I've gotten uh, to do some really some really cool stuff. I, I made a movie called Once Fallen with Ed Harris that I wrote and directed and starred in with him and Amy Madigan and Taraji Henson and Peter Weller Excellent. and you know, just some Excellent. other really cool people. And um, I wrote a movie and, and I'm producing a movie right now with Patriot Pictures that we're actually going to be shooting in, in March, in April. Um, uh that that i'm that i'm pretty excited about that that i also wrote um so it's it's you know i i just got hired to adapt another novel for this company mm. um and uh you know they're they're great people and i'm i'm really happy to be doing it but these these projects that i write i usually end up acting in anyway so um i i get to do i get to do it all without having to be on the street per se. And I got to tell you, I, I miss being on the street. You know, I miss being, I miss auditioning. I miss going, I, I miss the competitiveness of that, um, going into a room and wanting to blow people through the wall and, uh, you know, wanting to do all those things. And, and you know, eventually I'll get back to it. I, I just think that uh, through the through the years, I remember I did a series called Acapulco Bay back in the 90s that shot in Acapulco in Mexico City. And it was by far the worst television ever made. It was just, <laughs> it was just, it was just horrible. And it was 120 episodes of like the worst television ever. And I am like Tom Cruise in Ethiopia, though. I'm huge in Ethiopia. You guys don't have anything on me in Ethiopia. I am <laughs> huge, huge, huge in Ethiopia. And I remember coming back from that in 96 and saying to my girlfriend at the time, I said, you know, I don't think I can do that anymore. And she said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to write a movie that that I wish I was offered. And I ended up writing Once oh. Fallen. And nine years later, I, I made that with Ed and Amy. So, you know, oh, it takes nice. a long time to do your own project mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, but I, I find it really gratifying. And I find it a little bit more exciting waking up in the morning knowing I'm doing this stuff than waiting to hear if I got a guest star on VIP, you know. Um, and, and auditioning isn't the same as it was when you were doing it for, you know, the show. Especially you now, know? you got to do it. You got to do it like we're doing it right now. Exactly. Everybody's got to do it. Do it that way. I mean, Jeff, Jeff, don't you, Jeff? Aren't you doing that? Are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I am. Yeah. How is that? How is it? That sounds better. How is that going? Um, How is it for, 
Yeah, so it puts more people. control. You have more control yeah, over true. that audition. Yeah. Yeah. It is different, though, when you're not in the room, you know, when you're not seeing the people. It's got to be. But it's got to be. What are you going to do? I mean, it's that's what it is now. Yeah, and, and it works. Hey, Jeff, you've done so much prime time. I mean, Dexter is one of my favorites. You were phenomenal. Yeah. I, I, yes, I, was lo I was loving um, splitting up together. I mean, I, I don't know if you can pick, but do you have a favorite that you uh, have been Other a part of? Hope, you mean? <laughs> prime time of your prime time. Yeah. Uh, I guess... I guess maybe it would be Dexter simply because the show, you know, was so successful for Showtime and uh, it went on for, you know, quite a few years. Certainly. Uh, I was doing one that got canceled last year with Kiefer Sullivan and we actually were shooting in a Toronto called Designated Survivor that went three seasons. Yeah, it was a great show. Which was, yeah, it kind of lost its way at the very end there, but it had, the problem was it had either four or five different executive producers over three seasons so wow. there was no consistency uh and they changed it and at first it was on uh, abc then it went over to netflix for a year and and that that uh, was a I, I, funny because i had done the show 24 oh, uh, that's what i was just gonna say you did that with him and i had never i had never met Kiefer because our characters would never meet oh and wow then when I did this other show 10 years later or whatever it was uh all our scenes were together so it's a good show. ironic, huh? It's a great show. Which one? Does it need to survive? Yeah. Yeah, it was terrific. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Malcolm, fans, Malcolm fans were asking what what you've been up to. I know you've you've spent a lot of time in the spiritual side of things. Uh, yeah. In, in fact, my last audition, Jim, do you remember seeing me at an audition about ten years ago in in LA? It was that long. Was, it was it. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, that was my last audition. Wow. I you remember I threw, what it was for? No, I remember my role was second thug, which gives you <laughs> an idea of why it was my last audition. Absolutely. Yeah, brutal. Uh, but yeah, uh, all along, I mean, even before I did Ryan's Hope, I had like spent some time in India and was deep into meditation and yoga. And um, uh, after after that, I uh, that audition, I was already doing voice acting for TV shows, background voices, voice replacement, what they call ADR, and uh, looping is another word for it. And I um, had a really successful career in that, but also a lot of free time. And uh, so I was able to delve into spiritual studies and um, spent a lot of time in the Amazon uh, working with shamans there wow. and uh, kind of um, going through some initiations and some mentoring. And so that's been mm -hmm. kind of a, a, a parallel area of my life through all of this is is the spiritual work yeah mm -hmm. so which if, which would feed into the acting but uh and i guess the acting would feed into uh doing ceremony as well so they they worked well together but that's my story my father um, always said that you were his favorite oh really that oh. to be your favorite he says no no Pat, Pat, Pat is. Pat's character. Oh, well, tell him yeah. thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think the last time we saw each other in person, and wasn't it at John Gabriel's birthday party out here? Yes, John and Sandy Gabriel came out, and in the Valley, they they held an event, and you yeah. and I were there, and yeah. Callie and um, Ron Hale. Ron was, was there, there before he moved to South Carolina, yeah. Oh, did he move to South Carolina? Yeah, yes. about four, four years ago. He was he in bought Palm a house Spring. down there. Oh, uh, he was in Palm Springs at that yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was the last time do... I saw Ron was in Palm Springs. I'm uh, going to do a show with John and Sandy together, I think. Pardon? We're going to try and do one of these with John and Sandy. Oh, perfect, perfect. Oh, yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, she was on the sister show, All My Children. Yeah, she was. Right. And Eileen, is there any update on Melange? I know Tom Dangora really wants to do it. It's just <laughs> that... And we're, he's got all the scripts and everybody is gung-ho to do it. It's just a question of with COVID, it, it adds hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, of cost. Yeah. And um, that, you know, that's a bit of a problem. Um, 
Well, it's just the logistics. And also people would be coming in from LA. You've got to quarantine them for like two weeks yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. legally. So that makes it, um, that makes it, you know, uh, well, iffy, the but I, will help. what? Hopefully the vaccine, you know, once we get that going with everybody. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Right, right now I'm uh, struggling with my, uh, we're writing a book about Greece called me, called Tell Me More, Tell Me More. And um, <laughs> oh, that's good. yeah, and I've written a couple of chapters about my audition for that, about my first week of rehearsal, which was really hard and about the first preview. And now I have to kind of write, and I'm really having trouble just writing up, summing up the two years that I was there. Everything kind of falls out of order and nothing seems as interesting as the, those first three chapters that I did. But that's kind of what my, where my mind is right now. I want to I want to be able to sum up those two years in Greece because that was an amazing, yeah. that was an amazing adventure. I haven't done mine yet. Are they still, are we, isn't it past the deadline? Well, the original deadline, my friend, was September 30th. Yeah, that's was, what I thought. It was September 30th, <laughs> but if you've got something to say, I'm sure, you know, you can get it in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, just oh, write oh. one of, take one of the questions and, and write it. You know, right. no, I have some stories for sure. So yeah. they're looking at all the actors from Greece and getting everybody's perspective. Yeah. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. that's great. Here's what, I, here's what I want to do, guys. What I want to do is, and I actually wrote this out about three or four years ago, is I want to get all of us that are on here right now and get a few other people from other shows and produce our own soap opera that would be an R-rated version, though. <laughs> and do do the same kind of format, you know, do a three camera format and do the whole just like we did it back in the 80s, but do it online and do it as a more, if you will, grown up R rated version of, of a soap opera. And we would all own it. Our scenes were R-rated, weren't they, Eileen? I was, I was yes, our well. scenes were definitely. <laughs> and, and, and definitely the scenes where I was, I actually was sleeping with your girlfriend, wasn't I, Malcolm? I mean, what kind uh, which of Which one? Uh, Nancy Vallon? No, Conchetta. Oh, Conchetta, that's right. Conchetta. Yeah. Conchetta, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was sleeping with her, which... That's uh, right. What, I'm what horrified kind of, to find what out. Kind of, what kind of, what kind You're of just learning this 30 years later. Yeah. <laughs> What? Um, Ka Callie, um, a fellow Canadian said that the Canadians were so proud you were representing Canada on Ryan. Yeah. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a close call actually because I I, I auditioned in in Toronto, and then they flew me down for the screen test, and I think they'd been looking for the character for a while, and they were you know ready to start shooting, and so I had to get my uh, work permit. And that's oh, yeah. not that easy to do. And, you know, so it, we had to get all the papers and all the letters of recommendation. And it was literally down to the wire, you know, um, last minute. And it came through. So I was ready to go. But, yeah, that was, it was, it was fun. And then got to live in New York City and yeah. get my own place. It was just such a fun time. It was a good yeah. time to be in New York. And 80s New York, man. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So the four West Coast or five West Coasters, do you miss New York? Oh, totally. I was Absolutely. just there. I was just there in September with Eileen. I, I said earlier, and man, I, I I would I would live there again in a second. Yeah, in a second with a job. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Not, with a, not without a job. Yeah. My wife and I want to move back, but um, I have another twelve years to go. So. Uh, it's gonna be a little while. Yeah, that's you got you got you got to get your twenty in, right? I gotta get my twenty in. You gotta but get your twenty. I, in. If, if we could do it tomorrow, we would. Mm. Um, there's there's something special about uh, the East Coast, and uh, and I missed it. So, Jimmy, were you out in New Jersey? Because you said Paramus. Did you live in New Jersey? I lived in Jersey too. I lived all over. Um, but uh, yeah, I started at my high school uh, in Cardinal Hayes in the Bronx. Um, which is right by Yankee Stadium. Regis. Yeah, yeah, we just went there. Yeah, George Carlin we went, went there. there. I'm kind of in, uh, George Carlin got kicked out the same year I did. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I ended up uh, living on my own at 17 uh, in Paramus. Uh, I had dropped out of high school for a year. And then when I went back in, I, I went to Paramus High School. And that's 
you know, I'd um, always been at Catholic schools and they didn't really have much of a theatrical uh, uh, program offered. And this high school did and even had Shakespeare. Um, and I just always wanted to, you know, see what that was like. And uh, um, so I had a, a, a good experience uh, at, at Promise High School and that's kind of what led me into being an actor. If it wasn't for that, um, that high school I, and the teachers that I had there, um, I, I would never even thought to be an actor. But uh, oh. but no, I miss like it, it could be New York for me. It could be New Jersey. Can I lived in Connecticut? Um, remember, I lived, I lived I lived in Jersey City for six months. Do you remember you that? That's, remember that stint? <laughs> I had I had a I had That's a, a tough place. city. That's I a had, tough city. No, dude, this was 1987. I yeah, back then it was and, much tougher. Dude, it was Walt Willie. Walt Willie was, oh, yeah, Walt was Willie. on our show, who, who I adored. Yeah, and great Walt, guy. He had a townhouse in Jersey City, and I had just broken up with Debbie, my longtime girlfriend, who moved back to L.A., and I was in this big apartment on 85th and Amsterdam. Remember, Eileen? Yes, of course. That and, I do remember. And and Eileen was constantly telling me that I was so, you know, I was ridiculous to how much money I was spending on rent. I mean, I was the only guy, I think, that spent three years in New York and left in debt. I mean, I had no money when I came <laughs> I spent every dollar I I made on Ryan's Hope in that city. And so uh, I was devastated with this breakup. And Walt said, well, you know, why don't you come and live with my wife? Um, I think her name was Carrie. And, yeah, Carrie, yeah. Yeah, Carrie, remember Carrie. And yeah. so they had this basement apartment underneath their townhouse in Jersey City. And this place was like a DMZ, man. It was, it was scary. And for six months, I lived in this little dingy dark little place and every day i'd take the path train to work and i'd come back and i'd have a pizza i'd learn my lines i'd go to karate down the street you know and and because i was trying to you know get as tough as jimmy wilchek and <laughs> i i would just for six months i was i was out there in this little apartment in jersey city now you can't get near jersey city i i understand because it's so expensive to live there no I mean, you it, can you can, can. You? Oh, yeah. Because I know it got gentrified <laughs> quite a bit. From part of it is very gentrified. Part right. of it, but part of it really isn't. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that was that was temporary insanity on my part. Six months in Jersey City. Wow. Oof. I remember uh, the last place you had, which was on Broadway and, like, 56th Street. And that yeah, was that was the symphony, symphony House. Yeah, that was yeah. expensive. Wow. Oh, my God. Took, took everything I had. I mean, but it was a beautiful apartment, man. It was, I went by there uh, when I was in September when I was visiting you and it was, it looked exactly the same. Oh yeah. I mean, it was crazy. Um, the city still looks basically the same. I mean, it was. It, it's, it's a diminished version of what it is yeah. right now. It, it's a sadder It'll version of what it It'll is. There, it, of course it will. It always does. Uh, you know, I grew up here my whole life, so I've seen the city in very many stages. What's very strange is that there's a lot of scaffolding and like they don't then they don't remove the scaffolding. So That's weird. then homeless people start setting up underneath it. And there are like like a lot of not tent cities, because I know in L.A. you got a oh lot my of God. tent cities. Wow. But there's people sleeping under, you know, in. um you know, under a lot of blankets, uh, under the scaffolding and, and a lot of stores are closed and a lot of restaurants are closed and they will not be reopening. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. here. That's going new, on here new too. things will yeah. come in, new things will come in, but, uh, La Caridad, a restaurant that I grew up with from the time I lived here when I was a child, when I was a kid, when I was 16 years old, La Caridad on 78th street and, uh, Broadway closed. Mm -hmm. That was like. Remember mm. Wilson's? Yes. We we, we all lived. Oh, in Wilson's. we lived in lived Wilson's in Wilson. so, and and Columbus. And, and we Columbus lived. On, Columbus it was be, Columbus. no between Amsterdam Columbus and Broadway. Oh, no, no, I'm just I'm talking about the other restaurant, Columbus. Oh, Columbus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the, that was right. that was Regis's restaurant, I think, for a time period. Yes, Regis was one of the owners. And was Regis on was on our show. Regis was uh, Maliki Maliki. Maliki. Uh, uh, oh, I, didn't, I didn't remember no. that. No, no, yeah. I had no, Malachi McCourt was Malachi. Yeah, McCourt. that was Malachi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I had a great, I had a great uh, storyline with Regis. We had, we had scenes together, and he was, he was phenomenal. He was really a much better actor than people, I think. Yeah, know. no, he, he was, was good. He was actually really good. And I used to come in, and we had a thing where I would, when the camera would go off of me and onto him, I would try to make him laugh. 
And he would continually get just so pissed off at me. Well, I can't work with this. I can't because he couldn't, you know, because I'd be going ah, 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 you know, behind the camera. And Regis was really nice to me. And it was the only um, live television that, that I ever got to do was was the Regis show, Regis and Kathy Lee in Mamaroneck, New, uh, in, in Mamaroneck, New York. We, they did a, a I was there. Remember? Uh, Remember? I was there because. Because I, I got my start working on that show. Oh, my God. We did, yeah, we did was, promotes in five cities. That we we went to five different cities, and Maranek was one of them. That was, that, wow. was, that was a great day, man. We, we all got to hang out on that show, and we were right on the, bo on the, on the boat yard there. Um, and Regis was really nice to me, man. He was a very was, sweet was, guy. He was a That's great crazy. dude. Well, guys, thank you so thank much you, for doing Alan. this. And I, I mean, thank man. you for setting this up. Yeah, it was great. Yes. It was, it was so you good guys. to see you guys. Everybody stay we well, stay healthy. I hope we can all hang out. The ones that are all of us in LA, I hope we can all get together. That'd be great. You should. You yeah. should. Time is a fleeting, guys. <laughs> and, 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 Jim, and Jimmy, uh, I'll get I'll get I'll get everybody's number from Alan. I'll I'll email okay. Alan and get okay. it and, and then I'll uh, I'll try to arrange it and I'll I'll play a cruise director here and try to get everybody together. And Jimmy uh, put Kathy Larson in touch with me. Um, she couldn't make it today, but I'm going to post a video from her on Instagram. Where is um, Kathy? I she had I don't a know where she would have been here, yeah. but she had a prior commitment that she couldn't get out of. Does she live in L.A.? No, and, and I don't. I haven't spoken to her since uh, 1989. Uh, um, I, yeah, I but I, no I, I, I have a. We have a mutual friend, and I reached out to that friend, and I said, you know, we're doing this thing, and it would be great if Kathy could be a part of it, because um, I have such wonderful memories of, of Kathy. Um, sweet girl, thank really you, sweet. you guys. Um, but I, can I just really quick just echo something that that Ash said? Yeah, I'm totally. Ryan's Hope was was such a, it was like my first love and I never got over it and I never got over when we got canceled and um, and the Oliver North thing was a big part of why uh, Ryan's Hope saw its demise because of the ratings and whatnot but I had just such wonderful memories of each and every one everyone there was no clicks um, everybody welcomed me everybody was so supportive and and you know like Ash came to you know surprise me in Puerto Rico one time you know it was just you know, we, we could have hated each other, but he was so wonderful. And and Eileen, you know, working with you, I, and I, I just felt so. It was, I was devastated when Ryan's Hope um, was canceled, and I have such my my. I know I light up when uh, Ryan's Hope is mentioned, and mm -hmm. I was when I was told that this was going to happen. I, I was so excited, and it, you know, it's a first love I never got over. So I. You yeah, guys I hear you. That, that can I moment. say? Can I say one thing, Jimmy, about about that? Also, you know, the the lad the, when when we all found out that the show was canceled, you know, I I remember I was in Rhode Island. It was and Halloween. I, I was and I was up and I was up in Rhode Island, and I and I got all these phone calls. I got a phone call from uh, from Ron Hale, and I got like when I was checking my 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 answering machine from up there and I got like four messages from Eileen. Call me, call me, call me, call me, call me. And so I, so the last message from Eileen on my, on my, on my message machine was stop spending money. The show got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I always remember that. It's so, like, got to be a devastating money. thing to hear. But just so you know, actually, it was going to be loving that was supposed to be canceled, mm -hmm. and there was yes, it was maneuvering with Agnes yeah. Nixon. Yes, yeah. there was. She maneuvered that Ryan's hope was yeah, going to be the time going off the air. Just so you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. the truth. So um, noted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> duly noted. Yeah. Well, I love you guys, man. It's great to yeah, see everybody. Yeah, great to see everybody. And as as Helen Gallagher ad lived on the last line after the song, have a nice life. Have a yeah. That's right. Remember oh that? God, yeah, I remember song. that that yeah. line. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Oh. Well, thanks Wonderful everybody. Scene. Thanks for being here. Thank, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. And thank Kelly, you so thank you so much for showing up. Yeah. 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 Great to see everybody. Love you all. All right. Love you guys. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye.